First in the spotlight tonight is Tom Parker, an e-content specialist from Farnham. He's answering questions on the television series Game of Thrones. Next, David Kizilevsky, a retired advertising executive from Seven Oaks, whose subject is Neil Young. Julie Lloyds, a medical secretary from Birmingham, and her subject, Bourneville Village. And Bob Munger from Warminster on the famous lawyer Sir Edward Marshall Hall. And welcome to Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. Four contenders are competing against each other and uh, everyone else in these opening rounds for a place in the grand final. But, of course, they're really competing against themselves. They may know their stuff, but it's remembering it under the pressure of the black chair, the spotlight and the clock. They get two minutes in the first round and then two and a half minutes on the second. So let's have our first contender, please. And your name is? Tom Parker. Your occupation? E-content specialist. And your chosen subject? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones in two minutes. Here we go. What phrase associated with the Stark family of Winterfell and said by Ned Stark, played by Sean Bean, is the title of the first episode of Game of Thrones? Winter is coming. Yes, Egret says that among the wildlings, people with red hair are rare and are said to have been kissed by what element? Fire. Yes, at the Battle of the Blackwater, a ship filled with wildfire explodes in the middle of Stannis Baratheon's fleet. Who ignited it with a flaming arrow on the orders of Tyrion Lannister? Bronn. Yes, what three objects that she received as a wedding gift does Daenerys Targaryen place on the funeral pyre of Khal Drogo in fire and blood? Dragon eggs. Yes, Rob Stark, his wife Tullissa and his mother, Catelyn, all killed at the wedding of one of Walder Frey's daughters. Which one? Rosalind. Yes. In The Ghost of Harrenhal, Arya Stark works in disguise as a cupbearer to Tywin Lannister. Where in the north does she say she is from after initially claiming to be from Maidenpool? Pass. Samuel Tarly asks Jon Snow to help a young pregnant woman and let her come with them when they leave Craster's Keep. What's her name? Gilly. Yeah, when a knight appears to be drunk at King Joffrey's name day, Joffrey forces him to drink more wine and declares him to be his new court fool. What is the knight's name? Dantas Hollard. Yes, in Second Wars, what does Cersei threaten will happen to Marguerite if she ever calls her sister again? Uh, she'll kill her. Yes, Jon Snow is brought before the King Beyond the Wall in the Wildlings camp and is told, we don't kneel for anyone beyond the wall. What's the King's name? Mance Raider. Yes, the name the Garden of Bones is given to the desert area around the city that Daenerys visits, which is ruled by the Thirteen. What's the city called? Carth. Yes, Jaime Lannister became known as the Kingslayer after he killed the Mad King Aerys Targaryen. What does he say Aerys's last words were? Bird them all. Yeah. Which family has a kraken for its sigil or arms and for its family motto the words, we do not sow? Greyjoy. Yep. Yeah. What is the name of the red priestess who tells Arya Stark that she sees many eyes that Arya will shut forever and that they will meet again? Melisandre. Melisandre, indeed. One pass in the ghost of Harrenhal. Arya Stark says she is from Barrow Town. Apart from that, Tom, you've got 13 points. And our next contender, please. And your name is? David Kizilevsky. Your occupation? Retired advertising executive. And your chosen subject? Neil Young. Neil Young in two minutes. Here we go. Neil Young first worked with Stephen Stills in a band whose first single, nowadays Clancy Can't Even Sing, was released in August 1966. Which band? Buffalo Springfield. Yes. What childhood disease did Young contract during the epidemic in Canada in 51 when he was six years old? Polio. Yep. Yeah. What was the name of Young's early band formed with his school friend Ken Coblen that cut a single called The Sultan for V Records? The Squires. Yes. What is the title of Young's 1970 studio album that contains the tracks Cripple Creek Ferry and Southern Man. After the Gold Rush. Correct. Which Oscar-nominated actress was the mother of young son Zeke, born in September 72? Carrie Snodgrass. Yes. Young joined Crosby, Sills and Nash in 69 and the supergroup made its public debut at the Auditorium Theatre in August of that year in which city? 
Chicago. Yes. Which record label owner filed a lawsuit against Young in 1983 for making records that he considered to be uncommercial and unrepresentative of Young's normal work? David Geffen. Yup. Young recorded his only American number one single, Heart of Gold, during a trip to Nashville in 1971 to appear on whose television show? Johnny Cash. Yep. Young wrote the song The Needle and the Damage Done about the struggles of his friend and guitarist with Crazy Horse, who died in 1972. What was his name? Danny Whitten. Yep. At which venue in Los Angeles did Neil Young and Crazy Horse perform in November 86? The concerts formed the basis of the material used to produce their 87 album, Life. Pass. What is the name of the film that Neil Young worked on in 1972? He credits it in his memoirs as being the birth of his film company, Shaky Pictures. Journey Through the Pass. Yep. In his memoirs, Waging Heavy Peace, Young says that a former member of Crazy Horse came up with the phrase, keep on rocking in the free world, and receives royalties for the song. Which member? Nils Lofgren. No, Frank San Pedro. What is the name of the Neil Young and Crazy Horse live album that was recorded during their 91 US tour? Weld. Yeah. Which Buffalo Springfield song that Neil Young and Stephen Stills performed at the 69 Woodstock Festival includes the line, I dropped by to pick up a reason? Woodstock. No, Mr. Soul. A lovely thought. That dropped by to pick up a reason. You had uh, one pass, David. Uh, Universal Amphitheatre was uh, that venue in Los Angeles where Neil Young and Crazy Horse did a gig. You have scored 11 points. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Julie Lloyd. Your occupation? Medical secretary. And your chosen subject? Bourneville Village. Bourneville Village in two minutes. In the 1870s, who decided, with his brother Richard, to move their factory and workers to the rural area outside Birmingham that became Bourneville, saying no man ought to be condemned to live in a place where a rose cannot grow? George Cadbury. Yes, which canal forms the eastern boundary of Bourneville Village? Its existence was one of the reasons the Cadbury brothers chose the area. Worcester and Birmingham. Yes. What was the name of the first architect used by the Cadbury brothers when they decided to relocate their business to Bourneville? He designed the factory and the first group of cottages for the key workers in the 1870s. George Gadd. Yes. In what year was the Bourneville Village Trust founded? The Trust's aim was to ensure planned development of the estate and to preserve it for future generations. 1900. Yes. In which European city were George and Elizabeth Cadbury? When they heard the cathedral's carillon of bells, they decided to install a carillon in the tower of the Bourneville School in 1906. Pass. What is the name of the local designer who was appointed as the architect of the Bourneville estate in 1895? William Alexander Harvey. Yes. What is the name of the house rebuilt next to Selly Museum in 1932 that includes part of the medieval crock-framed house originally located near Sutton Coalfield? Minworth Green. Yes. What was the original name of the hall designed by W.A. Harvey and built around 1903 on the edge of the village green? It was used temporarily as the infant school and later became a college of arts and crafts. Ruskin Hall. Yes. The three-storey block of houses at number 17 to 21 Sycamore Road were built for which workers so they would be near the Cadbury factory if needed? The fireman. Yep. What is the name of the pavilion that was built as a clubhouse for the extensive open lands bought and developed for recreational use by Cadbury employees? It originally opened in 1924. Roheath Pavilion? Yes. Which Grade 2 listed building on Bourneville Lane was designed and built by G.H. Lewin and opened in 1904 for the exclusive use of Cadbury girls? Oh, pass. To whom is the Romanesque Bourneville Parish Church on the edge of the village green dedicated? St Francis of Assisi. Yes, the local railway station for the village is now called Bourneville. What was its name when the Cadbury brothers arrived to develop the area? Sturchley Street. Is correct. Two passes. It was a ladies' swimming baths built by G.H. Lewin and opened for the exclusive use of Cadbury girls. And they were in Bruges when they heard the cathedral's bells and said, we want some of that. Julie, you have scored 11 points. <laughs> and our final contender, please. And your name is? Bob Munger. Your occupation? Retired. 
and your chosen subject. The life and career of Sir Edward Marshall Hall. Edward Marshall Hall in two minutes. Here we go. Sir Edward Marshall Hall was the defence lawyer in several high-profile murder trials in the early 20th century. One of his clients was hanged for the Brides in the Bath murders in 1915. Who was he? George Joseph Smith. Yes, in 1923, Marshall Hall's client, Marguerite Fahmy, was found not guilty of the murder of her Egyptian husband, Prince Fahmy Bay. In which London building was her husband killed? Savoy Hotel. Yes, from which Shakespeare play did Marshall Hall quote during his closing speech in the trial of Harold Greenwood, who was accused of poisoning his wife. Othello. Yeah. What was the name of the King's counsel who worked with him in the Deniston case in which Mrs Deniston was trying to claim money from her former husband? He took over when Marshall Hall fell ill. Uh, Norman Burke? Yep. Yeah. In the Camden Town murder, Robert Wood was alleged to have sent a postcard to the victim. What was drawn on the card to indicate the pub where they should meet? Rising Sun. Yes. During the trial of Edward Lawrence, the judge staged a fight to show whether or not a gun could have been fired accidentally. What was the judge's name? Avery? No, Mr Justice Jelf. Which famous writer did Marshall Hall help represent in a libel action against the stage paper The Era? Um, W.S. Gilbert. Yes, what plea did he initially enter for his client, Frederick Holt, whom he went on to defend on the grounds of his insanity and the fact that he had an alibi? Um, diminished responsibility? Unfit to plead. In 1910, a solicitor asked Marshall Hall to take on the defence of Dr Crippen, but his clerk turned it down because the fee could not be guaranteed. What was the solicitor's name? Um, Arthur Newton? Yes. Marshall Hall was an MP until 1916. After retiring from politics, he was made recorder of a Surrey town. Which town? Guildford. Yes. One of his most famous civil cases was the Russell divorce and paternity suit. Which barrister led the case for Marshall Hall's client when it was taken to the House of Lords on appeal? Pass. The body of Irene Munro was found on the Shingle Beach at Eastbourne in August 1920. The subsequent murder trial is often named after the stretch of beach. What's it called? Crumbles. Yes. Time is up. You had one pass. It was Douglas Hogg. So Douglas Hogg who um, took over uh, and um, took it to the House of Lords on appeal. Well, you've scored, Bob, nine points. Well, that was a close round. Let's have a look at all the scores. In fourth place, nine points, Bob Munger. In joint second place, 11 points apiece, David Kizilewski and Julie Lloyd. First place, 13 points, Tom Parker. <laughs> so it is the general knowledge round now, and if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account, and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they are tied on passes as well, there will be a tie break. And by the way, the six highest scoring runners up in these rounds will also be able to claim a place in the semi final. So, plenty to play for. Let's get on with it and uh, ask Bob to join us again, if he would, please. And uh, you start out with. Nine points, plenty of time to catch up and overtake because we've got two and a half minutes for general knowledge starting now. Broad Halfpenny Down in Hampshire was the playing field for the dominant village team of Hambledon in the formative years of what sport? Cricket. Yes, in 2009, which academic institution elected the poet and scholar Ruth Padell as its first female professor of poetry, although she'd only held the post for a short time? Cambridge University. Yeah, Oxford. A type of fern that is often found growing thickly on Britain's heaths and moors have fronds that may grow up to around two metres in height. What's it called? Broom. Bracken. A female singer born on St Kitts had her only top ten UK hit single with Love and Affection in 1976. What's her name? Pass. In which battle of 480 BC were King Leo? Leonidas of Sparta and his small force totally wiped out in their vain attempt to defend a pass against a vastly superior Persian army. Thermopylae. Yes. Who first came to fame for her portrayal of Sheila Grant, the mother of Barry Damon and Karen in Brookside? Sue Johnson. Yeah. The ownership of the southern Kuril Islands, which lie off the northern Japanese mainland, is disputed between Japan and which other country to China? whom the islands were ceded oh. in 1945? China. Uh, Russia. The area of what plane figure can be calculated by halving the length of its base and multiplying the result by its perpendicular height. Cylinder? 
triangle. The venom of coastal and inland species of an Australian snake is generally reckoned to be one of the deadliest in the world. What is the snake called? Tiger. The Taipan, which movement began with the Rochdale pioneers in 1844. Its aim is that everyone works together for a common goal, that of good service over the pursuit of profit. Co-op. Yes. In Greek mythology, who was the personification of divine justice and vengeance, especially on those who roused the anger of the gods by their presumption? Pass. Who won the 2004 Man Booker Prize with his novel The Lion of Beauty? Pass. In what snowboarding event did Jenny Jones become the first Briton to win an Olympic medal on snow when she won a bronze at the 2014 Winter Games? Skeleton. Slope style. Which Welsh singer followed up her UK number one debut single with the number two hit Goodbye in 1969, written and produced by Paul McCartney? Um, Mary Hopkins. Yeah. What was the name of the Indian spiritual teacher who was the first guru and founder of the Sikh religion? Nanak. Yes. Which Swiss town lies at the foot of the Matterhorn? Savannah. Zermatt. Who was nominated eight times for a Best Actor Oscar for films including Beckett and Goodbye Mr Chips, but never won? He was given an honorary award in 2003. Um, Peter Finch? No, you got half of it right, Peter O'Toole. <laughs> you had um, three passes. The author of The Line of Beauty was Alan Hollinghurst. Nemesis, the personification of divine justice. And Joan Armour Trading had her only top ten hit in this country with love and affection in 1976. And, Bob, you have a total of 15 points. Thank you. And now, David, again, please. And uh, you start out with 11 points. Let's see how you do. Two and a half minutes of general knowledge coming up. Which singer was born Marie MacDonald McLaughlin Laurie near Glasgow in 1948? Her early hits included Shout and To Sir With Love. Lulu. Yeah. Which 1863 speech contains the words, Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal? Gettysburg Address. Yes. What is the popular name given to the small area in the field of vision of each eye that is caused by the optic disc, the point on the retina, where there are no rods or cones? Meniscus. The blind spot. By what name are the rotund bees of the genus Bombus usually known? Bumblebees. Yes. Which novel by Charles Dickens opened as a full-scale West End stage play for the first time in February 2013? It has previously been made into a film, a television series and a musical. Oliver. Great Expectations. Who became a national hero in 1900 for his 217-day defence of Mafeking during the Boer War? He's now better known for founding the Scout Movement. Baden Powell. Yep. The Glory of the Seas cone, which is golden brown with a fine pattern, is one of the varieties most prized by collectors of what? Coral. Seashells. Who pioneered the use of punched cards in data processing for the tabulation of the 1890 census in the USA? Pass. What name for a person who claims to speak for a deity or to foretell the future comes from the Greek for to speak for? Pass. What French name is given to the member of the lobster family, closely related to Dublin Bay prawns, crayfish and scampi, that is a popular seafood delicacy? Langoustine. Yes, the Roman Catholic Feast of the Assumption is celebrated on August the 15th and commemorates the taking up into heaven of the body and soul of whom? John the Baptist? No, Mary. In March 2014, Anne Hidalgo, who was born in Spain, became the first woman to be elected mayor of which city? Barcelona. Paris. Which musician played guitar and banjo in Ken Collier's and Chris Barber's jazz bands before becoming famous as a solo artist during the skiffle craze of the 50s? Lonnie Donegan. Yes. In the Second World War, what single word reply did the American General McAuliffe reportedly make when he was ordered to surrender the Belgian town of Bastogne by the Germans? Pass. Raymond Gould becomes the Prime Minister at the climax of which Geoffrey Archer novel? Brothers in arms. First among equals, members of a Sri Lankan separatist movement were responsible for murdering Rajiv Gandhi in 1991. What's the movement called? Tamil Tigers. Tamil Tigers is correct. You had uh, three passes. That um, single word reply from General McAuliffe to the Germans was nuts. <laughs> You'll be crossing this off for this. That name for a person who claims to speak for a deity or foretell the future is a prophet. 
And the uh, chap who pioneered the use of punched cards way back in 1890 was Herman Hollerith. Yeah, quite. David, you have now a total of 18 points. <laughs> and now Julie again, please. And uh, you start out with 11 points as well. And now 18 is the score to beat if you want to get through to the next round. So, let's see if you can do it. Who lived in a 3,000-acre ranch in California that he bought in 1988 and called Neverland? Uh, Michael Jacks. Yes. What is the English name for the type of painting known to the French as Nature Morte? Pass. Which musical by Claude Michel Schoenberg and Alain Boublil that opened in London in September 1989 was loosely based on Puccini's opera Madame Butterfly? Pass. Kernowek was given official recognition as a minority language by the European Union in 2002. In which English county is it spoken? Cornwall. Yes. Which song, based on an Andean folk melody, contains the line, I'd rather be a hammer than a nail? It appears on Simon and Garfunkel's album, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Oh, pass. The word algebra comes originally from what language in which it means resetting or reunification? Arabic? Yes. Whose television roles include Dr Richard Kimball on the run for a crime he didn't commit in The Fugitive and the private detective Harry Orwell in Harry O? David Johnson. Yes. Which festival celebrating the real presence of Christ in the consecrated bread and wine of the Eucharist has a name that means body of Christ in Latin? Um, Corpus Christi? Yes. The fairy tale Kaffir Rushes, read by Lee Montague, was the first story to be told on a children's programme in 1965. What was the programme? Yakanori? Yes. Which journalist and television presenter's first book, How to Eat, was followed up by the best-selling How to Be a Domestic Goddess? Nigella North. Yes. What is the full name of the Olympic sport that consists of five disciplines, epi fencing, swimming, horse riding, running and pistol shooting? <sighs> pentathlon. The modern pentathlon. Oh. What is the fourth biggest American state? It borders Canada and takes its name from its mountainous nature. Montana. Yeah. What was the surname of the father and son Italian composers Alessandro and Domenico who lived from 1660 to 1725 and from 1685 to 1757, respectively? Scarlatti. Yes. Which breed of dog is nicknamed the Sour Mug in America? It nearly disappeared after animal baiting was outlawed in 1835. Oh, um, pass. By what collective name are the Kentish towns of Chatham, Gillingham and Rochester known? Singapore. The Medway Towns. The mathematician Ada Lovelace, who worked closely with Charles Babbage on his prototype computer and has been described as the first computer programmer, was the daughter of one of the romantic poets. Which one? Mm, pass. What name did Terence Rattigan give to the conventional middle-class female theatre-goer who usually attended matinees? Mm, pass. Well, I can tell you, it was uh, rather disrespectfully Aunt Edna. <laughs> Why Edna? Who knows? Uh, your other passes, Ada Lovelace, uh, who worked closely with Charles Babbage, was the daughter of Lord Byron. The uh, Sour Mug, that nickname for the dog, the dog was an English bulldog. Mm. If I Could was the Simon and Garfunkel song, rather be a hammer than a nail. Miss Saigon was the musical loosely based on Madame Butterfly. And the English name for the Nature Mort is Still Life. Those passes, Julie, you've gone into the lead with 20 points. <laughs> And now Tom again, finally, please. And you start out, Tom, with your 13 points. The knowledge of Game of Thrones and, um, as you've just heard, 20 is now the score to beat if you're to get through to the semi-finals. Let's see if you can do it in two and a half minutes. Here we go. In which British city is the Writers' Museum dedicated to the lives and works of Robert Louis Stevenson, Sir Walter Scott and Robert Burns? Edinburgh. Yep. What is the common name of trees of the genus Fagus? The nuts they produce are traditionally used to fatten up pigs for market. Chestnut. Beach. Which English king was forced to put his seal on the Magna Carta in 1215 after a revolt of the barons? John. Yes. Seaweed is rich in an element that is essential for the proper functioning of the thyroid gland. Which element? 
Iodine. Yes. What is the principal distinctive feature of creatures described as bipedal? They've got two legs. Yep. In which castle did the investiture of the Prince of Wales take place in July 1969? Carnarvon. Yes. Gianluigi Buffon, Ica Casillas and Manuel Neuer have won the award at successive World Cups for being the best player in which position? Goalkeeper. Yeah. Robert Arthur Talbot Gascoigne Cecil was British Prime Minister three times between 1885 and 1902. How was he better known? Uh, Lord Salisbury. Yeah. In which city in eastern Germany did Johann Sebastian Bach die in 1750? It was also the birthplace of Richard Wagner in 1813. Dresden. Leipzig. Who is depicted in a heroic portrait by Jacques-Louis David? At his own request, he is sitting calm on a fiery steed crossing the Alps. Napoleon. Yes. Whose comedy creations include Tim Nice But Dim and Mr You Don't Want To Do It Like That? High Enfield. Yes, by what name is Mozart's much played serenade in G major, Kirchel 525, popularly known? Trumpet major. Eine kleine Nachtmusik. Which Cornish sailor created by Alexander Kent made his first appearance in the 1968 novel To Glory We Steer? Uh, hornblower. Richard Bolitho. Which is the only one of the four tennis Grand Slam tournaments not played in the Northern Hemisphere? Australian. Yep. In English folklore, what's the name of the phantom hunter with horns on his head who haunts Windsor Great Park? He's impersonated by Falstaff in The Merry Wives of Windsor. Pass. What title was added to the name of Scipio the Elder after he had defeated Hannibal at the Battle of Zama in 202 BC, thus ending the Second Punic War? Conqueror. Africanus. The French diplomat Ferdinand de Lesseps received an act of concession from the Khedive of Egypt to build a canal that was eventually completed in 1869. In which canal? Suez. Yes. By what name are the children's television presenters Richard McCourt and Dominic Wood better known? Dick and Dom. Yep. What is the name of the American Army intelligence analyst who was sentenced to 35 years in prison for leaking secret documents in August 2013. Uh, Bradley Manning. Yes, or Chelsea Manning, as he eventually wanted to be known. Uh, you had one pass. The uh, name of that phantom hunter with horns on his head who horns Windsor Great Park is Hearn the Hunter. You've scored, Tom, 26 points. A very clear winner. Let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place, with 15 points, Bob Munger. In third place, 18 points, David Kozilevsky. Second place, 20 points, Julie Lloyd. First place, with 26 points, Tom Parker. Which means that Tom is tonight's winner and he goes through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him. And if you would like to be a contender for the next series, do go to our website, bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us on Twitter at Mastermind Quiz. And do join us again next time for more Masterminds. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.